So, real talk, some of us are constantly tracking politics. Most Americans are not. One sign that politics in the campaign season are heating up, though, is how much Saturday Night Live and these late-night shows are turning increasingly to our American political circus. Political punchlines are, of course, familiar to our next guest, who is, and I say this literally, as much a creative as he is a politico. Rob Reiner, live on the beat right now. Of course, you know the actor and director of Iconic Films that capture everything from how America works, like A Few Good Men, to how love works, when Harry met Sally, to how fantasy works, The Princess Bride. $30,000 in one month, Jordy? Huh? So, uh, you're Mr. Bunker. You figured that out, huh? <laughs> the business expenses, relax. Business expenses? Oh, yes. Jordy, look what you got here. What? Look at this. $26,000 for one f dinner. Sandy has a girlfriend, Glenda. She's a weightlifter. Well, I mean, it's not like her neck is bigger than her head. Well, no, 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 no. I'm not asking you to set me up. I ordered the sides. So sides? Yeah. Sides? $26,000 yeah. worth of sides? <laughs> what are these sides? They cure cancer? Well, hold it. Hold it. What are you doing here? Why? What about the other foot? There ain't no sock on it. I'll get to it. <laughs> Don't you know that the whole world puts on a sock and a sock and a shoe and a shoe? <laughs> Rob Reiner is here. He joins us now. His latest documentary, Defending My Life, is about his friend Albert Books. It's available on HBO, streaming right now. And he has a new podcast called Who Killed JFK? Uh, Rob, thanks for being here. Yes, my pleasure, Ari. You were telling me one of those episodes you remember. Yes, I, on All in the Family, the one where I was with the beard and I was with the, I wrote that episode. That was a, a flashback to the first time Archie and Mike ever met. And uh, I was calling him Prejudice and he was singing God Bless America. When you write something like that and then you enact it, do you know up front this is how it's going to be and feel or that comes out through the process? Well, it's, you know, it's a rehearsal process. We did it every week in front of a live audience. So it was like putting mm -hmm. on a play and you find things during rehearsal. I don't like working in front of a live audience because you don't get to do do-overs. Well, you're doing it. You're in front of a live audience. That was the joke. I Oh, okay. I missed that one. Bing. <laughs> um... I got something to play you, and I'm thr I'm really excited. I'm going to tell people because it is a live uh, live thing. This is not on tape. No. Uh, I asked Robin the break. Did you see Saturday Night Live this weekend? He and said I, you haven't. No. So I we're haven't. all going to experience this together. And if you did see it, you're going to see it, one of the clips because I, I want to get into this with you. You got SNL's opening skit, which mocks President Biden as basically out of touch, struggling to even win over voters who say Trump is an authoritarian menace. Take a look. Okay. To keep things on the rails. I'm going to read from the teleprompter. Uh, I had a great meeting with uh, President Roman numeral 11. <laughs> Excuse me, President Xi. They all don't have to be for the panda. Let's get one for me. Sure, let's talk about your Middle East policy. You know what, I think people are liking the panda, right? <laughs> all right. If Trump gets elected in 2024, that would be a disaster. So you will vote for Biden? <laughs> is this a bad sign for President Biden? What does this comedy and culture tell us about his standing? Well, I think you don't even have to look past the comedy. You, you've had in the last uh, segment, you talked about how uh, young people are, you know, confused. They, they don't like Trump. They don't like Biden. They can't decide who they want to vote for. But I'm trying to impress on people as best I can that, you know, every time we have a presidential election, they always say this is the most important election of our life. Right. Lifetime. And people get tired of that. They tired of it. Yeah. This one actually is. Right. This one actually is. I think you're right. It's, it's both a piece of pablum that we're tired of and literally true this time. Yeah. No, no, no. You, you already you have one candidate, Trump, who actually tells you he's going to govern like an authoritarian. He yeah. says it. Yeah. It's not, not, a, his, not a mystery. And you have another guy who has been there, knows how to run the government, believes in the Constitution, believes in democracy, the rule of law, and you've got to make a choice. You have to make a choice. Do we want fascism or do we want to continue 
the 248 years of self-rule that this we is have. Why, look, uh, this isn't just a compliment. Yeah. This is why I like listening to you. You just said it more clearly than some of these Beltway uh, pundit types in the D.C. people or some of them around Biden. You just said it. Uh, do you... Do you, do you want fascism or not? Yeah. Are you going to give your vote to someone yeah. who's trying to take your vote? Yeah. Which doesn't mean you have to pretend that everything is sunny and perfect no, with no, the no, incumbent. No, no, It's a choice. You make a choice. And yeah. right now, we're at a place where it's a crossroads. Do we want to continue democracy or do we want to slip into fascism? Yeah. So let me show you from Weekend Update. Okay. Two of the jokes, which, and this we really selected for you tonight, these are kind of potentially substantive issues that okay. are raised, including... Okay. Uh, a joke about whether the president's committing foreign policy gaps. Take a look. After President Biden's successful meeting with China's President Xi Jinping, reporters asked Biden if he still believed that she was a dictator. And I don't know if Biden was supposed to say yes, because look at this reaction from Secretary of State Anthony Blinken. Would you still refer to President Xi as a dictator? The term that I Oh, man, that's the same face I make when my uncle starts a story by mentioning the race of the waitress. <laughs> it's actually the same. It's actually the same. It's actually the same face I made when I heard Biden say this about LL Cool J. LL J Cool J. <laughs> the second J stands for Jesus. Uh, how do you deal with that if that is the narrative and the filter and our, as you said, the Obama vet, we had a night said, well, people aren't tuning in yet. Well, they might not be tuning in yet uh, to hard news, but they're seeing these jokes and it's affecting their, their view of Biden. Yeah. I mean, you know, you remember back to the old days of Saturday Night Live, Chevy Chase was doing uh, Gerald Ford, who Fallen tripped, all over. tripped a lot. And, sure. and every time he tripped, that was a, that was the thing. Here's the thing about Joe Biden. If you have followed his political career, he's a gaff factory. He's been making gaffes good point. for a long, long this time. This is not a new thing. No, no. This is something he, he does. Of course, it's different now. You've got social media. You've got AI. Things go viral very quickly. But there's another thing that he's done for uh, decades, not only making gaffes, but making great policy and mm. knowing how to run the government and knowing how uh, uh, Washington works, knowing how the government works. And I want somebody with a steady hand on the wheel. I don't care if he makes a gaffe here and there. Uh, to me, what matters is how does it come out in the policy? Are we protecting uh, th this wonderful experiment of 248 years? Yeah. And you're really speaking as well about our culture and whether, as you said, with gaffes, viral, does the superficiality went out over everything, right? And, and these have been parts of the Biden sort of a personality style. And the right. language stuff, again, we have to, you know, we don't, we don't play favorites here. I'm showing what's really going on. Yeah. We showed some of the criticism earlier. It's also fair to note, he did overcome a stutter, and he does have a, a, a different speaking style than some, right? Yes. So it's not just, oh, it, but if you're, a, if you're 20 and you tune in, you might go, oh, this is, he must be, quote, so old, and that's the only yeah. reason. Yeah. Uh, and as both of us get older, we don't have a problem with that. No, <laughs> listen, I make a, a million mistakes. People make mistakes. You just don't want him making a mistake about something critical right. that affects our way of life. Yeah. And that's what I'm worried about with Donald Trump, because yeah. he's already told us yeah. that he is going to put people in, in camps. And those of us who, you know, are, are Jewish, we know what that we, that sound goes off and you go, oh, my God, mm. we know what that, that mm. means. So, yeah. uh, you know, it's, the choice couldn't be clearer. Right.